Well, I'm like representing Inglewood, you know, and and and, and that's pre so far, you know what I mean? Like Inglewood is in, in my blood, and I just feel like it just made me who I am in the younger in my younger years. So, so Kristen Welch, born and raised in Inglewood, California, at Inglewood Hospital, Cincinnati Hospital. Um, grew up about a mile and a half from where we are now at Rogers Park. Um, I used to play here. Um, my mom worked for the United States Postal Service for over 30 years. And with that, she worked graveyard. So even when she was pregnant with me, she was working graveyard. So I got a little graveyard spirit in me, you know, the nighttime. Um, but she was also a union rep. So she fought for employees who were um, not being treated fairly by the company based on their contract um, between the employees and the employer. So I watched her fight for people all the time, um, you know, saving their jobs, helping them from not being suspended, maybe money they were owed. Um, and again, that's why I like to say that community thing, although it was within um, a work environment, like I watched her take care of people um, in that way. So my dad, uh, he worked for the city of Los Angeles in Rec and Park for over 30 years. They both retired from their jobs. And with that, I was able to see a lot of the city because with the city of LA, you can be at one park, one location, one summer. Then when school start, you're at another park, another location. So I grew up really seeing all the city. I um, mean, being part of their program, so junior lifeguard stuff like that. We would go on field trips, and I, I've I've heard people tell my dad because he was over it. He was the one responsible for coordinating it. But we would take kids to the beach. I might be 10, 11, like so. We're taking kids to the beach for this field trip, and the kids are like, "Where are we? Like we're in another state? Like low key, we eight miles from your house, you know?" But like. In the inner cities, they weren't going to the beach, you know? So hearing that and seeing that, um, at the time it caught my attention, but it was just as I got older, I realized how holistically, you know, that made me who I am, like watching my parents do what they do. Seeing people in the community just work together, have fun, ride bikes, like it was, it was a good time. It was a good time growing up, for sure. My older sister, I would, uh, tell my parents that she had to take me so I can <laughs> so I can play like if she want to go she has to take me uh, so I can hoop so me and her would walk up here I'd hoop she hang out with her friends and um, you know it wasn't always the safest place to be you know like it turned up from time to time but no matter what school you was at you know you can meet up at the park after school and, and see some friends that you either live next to or went to school with in the past um, so it was a good time. Always good to be back, for sure, dear to my heart. And I'm glad to be here today. It was always a, a, a dream of mine. Uh, my sophomore year of college, realizing that my basketball career should come to an end. You know, being five, three and a half, flat foot, you know, it was like, Chris, give it up. You know, you should probably give it up. Um, but then, of course, that brought the trials and tribulations of transition. And now what? Because for my entire life, this was my goal. This was my focus. Um, so from there, I transitioned into sports medicine because I knew if I still couldn't play, like I still wanted to be around it. Um, and so I was always into like anatomy and just tangible things. So it seemed like a great direction. Um, and that's what I did. Got my degree in kinesiology. And then I went on and got my master's in kinesiology with the emphasis in sport management because I, I fell in love with the business side and trying to start my own sports medicine business because the climate coming back to Inglewood from San Diego, the climate was so different. It was like, okay, I need to start my own business to make sure I can kind of control um, my livelihood better and decided I wanted to work in the front office of a professional sports team. And so that was my goal. All of my internships um, that I had were with professional sport teams. Like I tried out different things just to see where it would lead me, but my laser focus was, so from there I worked for the Clippers, 
um, Angels baseball, but the Sparks was always like my goal because it was the WNBA. I'm like, I'm not playing, but you know, I could still come do my thing and be a part of the culture that had inspired me for so long. Anything like in Eagle, like I say, it, it touches my heart being born and raised. Um, I had times to work with the Inglewood Rotary. And so sometimes there's multiple layers, you know, on how to get things done. But even from, you know, renting out a space here at Rogers Park, um, where I used to play at, you know, those things add up and just show the people coming behind you, like what you can do as you get older and as you progress in life. Um, it, pro it provides representation, you know, and it gives a visual as to like what's possible. So, um, you know, it's never easy, but you know, it's bumps in the road, but definitely uh, me and the team that I work with definitely couldn't do it alone, but you know, everybody's always open to like, how do we make this work and get this done? So it's really about skill sets. Like what I learned in working in sport um, and studying, the management of sport and the business of sport is you can't do everything, you know? Um, and as the owner, founder of Network Sports, like I am the visionary, you know? Like I have to lead the team with the vision and then find people with the right skill sets um, and the right mentality that fit, it, that fit into the puzzle. Uh, I believe the things you do, like you should be authentic. And so everything I do and everything I'm a part of is authentic to who I am. And I think that that also is an intangible that people can't, that you can't buy. Like either you have it or you don't. Either you believe in it or you don't, you know, and it, and it shows through your, your work ethic. Um, it shows through your passion. Um, so for me, everything I try and do, I try and be authentic and because I, came up as a young female player where there was no WNBA. And then in 1997, um, I was 12 years old, there became a WNBA. Um, and then being fortunate enough to be a part of a front office team where we won a 2016 championship um, and seeing the business of things um, and just how we can as women, as athletes, as professionals, um, what tools, what skill sets, um, what knowledge can we gain to to move to move things forward? Because as a as a kid, typically boys play sports. Like that's kind of culturally ingrained. Like if you have to choose between your son and your daughter, most people automatically and innately like choose their son. You know. Um, and so because basketball did so much for me, you know, and my friends, like my, my friends I played with in high school, I was just talking to one today on the way here. That was 20 years ago, you know? So um, the experiences basketball allowed me to have, like the people I met, the, the foundation of the youth development and increasing girls' participation in sports, being able to get you know, whether it's 25 girls or if it's 200 girls, but that's my goal to bring as many together as I can. Um, one, to show girls do hoop and do have skill. Um, and then it also get, brings the community together and can even get sponsors involved. In April, it's actually in Vegas, actually, but it's a community event in Vegas. Spring, spring and summer, um, is when I do most of my tournaments. And, er, and early fall, just going along with um, kind of like the climate of player schedules and games and stuff like that. I'm, I'm an advocate for each young girl behind me to be able to experience even a piece of it because there's so many great stories um, personally and from people I know where um, athletics and basketball specifically has provided so many positive opportunities, so I'm all for it. So the financial literacy piece. So this is one of our products. So um, the Nothing But Net financial literacy flashcards, all of the financial literacy stuff. So at each community event, um, there is a financial literacy component, an education component, something fun to introduce kids to just in different concepts, different words, different terms. Um, that they can become familiar with at their age and age appropriately um, and can have some fun learning a very fundamental skill that they need to have. 
Part of the financial literacy piece is also like ownership. I personally didn't hear about, and as I talked to more and more people, it's not something that they actually heard about or talked about growing up or in school. Um, but along my journey, like you realize the value of ownership and how you can monetize things when you're the owner of them. And it's just instead of just being a worker, um, collecting the check, being an employee, business-wise and financially, it just doesn't make sense for you to be the highest paid if you're just providing a service. So the ownership um, allows you the opportunity to be able to monetize things and get uh, residual income on things when you actually have ownership in it. So with Network Sports, it was okay. My background in sales and um, community relations with the sports teams I work with, along with working with the city of Los Angeles and Reckon Parks for 17 years. Community is like ingrained into who I am. Um, so with Network Sports, it was like, okay, what can I do um, that I know how to do well? You know, I know the business of it, and I also know the impact it can have on the community. So just putting those things together, basketball, financial literacy, which are pretty much my childhood dream and my adulthood dreams, like put together. Um, it was like, how do I package, it up, package this up and share with the community so that everybody can benefit? And we could be more proactive in creating a lifestyle and, and an ecosystem that we could all benefit from and, and do more with and be more proud of. What we do at the events, whether it's a, a crossword puzzle, a word search, something coloring, but in that, they're learning things that they can utilize just going to the grocery store. If something is $9.99, like there's tax on that, you know? <laughs> like you can't, you can't walk in there with 10 bucks, you know? So just things that they can learn age appropriately um, from the financial literacy side. On um, basketball side, our community clinics and events um, are typically a space for the, the, rec the recreational athlete but it provided a space for me to just learn like intangible intangible lessons along the way so with our community clinics it allows kids to come not worry about being judged like winning like yeah once you get to a certain age you should have the mindset of being a winner and being competitive but if you can't even get into the gym or get on the court and build the confidence to learn the skill you, you can't even get to a winning mindset yet. So, you know, with Network Sports, we try and provide a space um, for those kids that may be overlooked or they're good at the game, but they don't have professional basketball dreams, but they can come hoop and play. So um, that's more of the space that Network Sports is in. No. <laughs> Yay!